Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Meet the Prime. This is a advertisement event for our 8,000 series rail car program here at WMATA. The prime contractor, Hitachi Rail, will be here to engage each and every one of you on the program elements. And we look forward for all, to all the information that we'll be bringing this morning. My name is Suzette Moore. I am the Vice President and Chief Procurement Officer for the Washington Metro Area Transit Authority. And it is wonderful to have so many of you here today to engage with WMATA and with Hitachi. I understand that we have over 750 registrants for this program, and we're very excited to be able to engage with you today. I'm pleased that we could host this virtual event to highlight the many opportunities for small and minority businesses to partner with Hitachi on this extraordinary project, our 8,000 series rail cars. I'm thrilled that you have taken the time out of your busy schedule to attend our event, and we intend to make it worth your while to be here today. We have plenty of information to pour out to you so about the rail car program. So please take advantage of what we're offering here today and learn about the program, ask many questions. Also, we want you to market your business so that we know what services and products you offer. I wanna take a moment here to thank the planning committee led by my small business program office. They do a fantastic job. That office is led by Michelle Howard. She is the director of that office. So she'll be around at this event today if there's specific questions for her. We ultimately wanna uh, thank our the Hitachi Rail team for taking time out of their busy schedules to be here to talk about this very important project. At this time, I would like to um, introduce Mr. Quo. He'll be bringing the initial open remarks this morning. Mr. Quo is currently the Executive Vice President for in Internal Business Operations. He's been in that role since June of 2016 here at WMATA. He has oversight of procurement, IT, labor relations, operational health and wellness, human capital, EEO, and planning performance and improvement. Quite a full plate there. He likes to say IBOP, which we call internal business operations, is the collective business, and we're in the business to support all of WMATA. Prior to um, joining WMATA, Mr. Quo was a member of the Federal Senior Executive Service and was appointed as the Associate Administrator for Administration with the United States Department of Transportation, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. When I first met John, he was working his way up the career ladder and ultimately ascended to Administrator and CEO of the Maryland Motor Vehicle Administration. During his tenure there, he led the efforts for many of the techn technology advances we enjoy today when we visit NVA. With that, John. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Suzette, for that introduction. And uh, you and I do uh, indeed go um, many, many years back. And um, uh, I'm always reminded uh, when we were uh, still working back in the office, uh, you, you still displayed this picture of us uh, from, um, uh, well, uh, 25, 30 years ago now, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, if only we could still look that young, uh, you know, to, uh, on this day. Well, once again, good morning and uh, welcome. Um, it is uh, great to see so many of you here joining us today. Uh, I'm pleased, we're pleased uh, that everyone could join us for this virtual event featuring the company that will be constructing the next generation of Metro's rail cars. Uh, all of you know the importance of uh, Metro to the region. And I'm sure that uh, as members of the uh, business community, you understand the importance of Metro uh, in keeping your company and the entire region's economy strong. Uh, you know, before the pandemic hit, our system of 91 rail stations across Maryland, Virginia, and uh, the District of Columbia uh, and more than 1,500 buses uh, operating on 325 routes provided critical public transportation for the entire region. During the pandemic, we provided the same critical transportation needs for all the essential workers. 
As we plan for post-pandemic operations, Metro will continue to play a very vital and important role in helping with the entire region's economic recovery. Our impact is indeed broad. We are the network that knits the entire region together. We enable employment, we enable housing, shopping, entertainment across all the different uh, communities in the region, boosting property values and increasing tax revenues near all of our stations and bus stops. Oh, uh, by the way, um, have you been on the road recently? You know, people are indeed getting back on the wheel and onto the road. Uh, I experienced rush hour congestion just this past Memorial Day weekend. People, don't get behind the wheel. Instead, get behind our system and onto our buses and trains. You can save workers uh, you know, and visitors hundreds of thousands of hours each day that will be lost in traffic congestion. And indeed, that traffic congestion will come back uh, because we, we're already starting to see that happening. Uh, you can save families hundreds of millions of dollars a year in car expenses. Uh, Metro obviously cannot provide all of these regional benefits and execute on all of our projects without the business community support. Your support of Metro, you support Metro with the tools and the services needed to keep the entire system running safely. And that includes the trains our customers ride on. Uh, for Metro Rail customers, the train is where they spend most of the time on their trip. Therefore, it must be safe, reliable, and able to last for several decades. While past rail cars have been manufactured hundreds or even thousands of miles away from the entire uh, from the Washington region, we're really excited that Hitachi is looking to locate an assembly plant for the 8,000 series rail cars here in the region, generating direct and indirect local jobs in the area. While there are no U.S. manufacturers of passenger rail cars, Metro included goals in our request for proposal to ensure that investment takes place in local vendors like yourself. Supporting the manufacturing of the 8,000 series rail cars is a unique opportunity to impact the lives of hundreds of thousands of riders each day. Not only will the new rail cars further improve customers' onboard experience with more screens and real-time information, they will also represent Metro and Hitachi's shared commitment to sustainability. In fact, with electric vehicles increasing in uh, popularity, did you know that Metro already operates the largest electric fleet in the region? Uh, Pre-pandemic, we were moving over half a million daily passengers you know, every single day. This is your chance to help move the region forward in a safer, more reliable, and more sustainable way for decades to come. As you participate in today's event, uh, also consider turning in and visiting our educational corner where we will cover topics such as other upcoming procurement activities, uh, maximizing opportunities with Metro, reviewing procurement policies and procedures, and of course, becoming certified with uh, the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority. Thanks again for joining us today, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Uh, and now it is my pleasure and privilege to introduce the man who has been leading our national capital's premier transit system through all of these ever challenging, changing times. Please welcome my boss, our general manager and CEO, Mr. Paul Wiederfeld. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Um, fantastic to see everyone uh, this way. I know with over 700 uh, people registered, it's just, it's a great opportunity for all of us, um, obviously for you, but for us to expand uh, the, the, the vast number of people that come and are part of the system for us. So that's fantastic. And uh, John and, and Suzette, obviously I'm gonna thank you for your team's efforts to pull this together and really not just this meeting, but what you've done to get through this whole procurement process and get us to this point. So thank you very much. Um, what I thought I'd do before turning it back to Suzette to, to move into the presentation, the detailed information you want, uh, I thought I would talk a little bit about what we've been through over the last 18 months and what our future is. So obviously over the last 18 months, transit across the, across the globe has been hit significantly. Here in the region, our rail ridership dropped by 90%. Um, and our bus ridership had, had dropped uh, almost the same, around 80%. But we're coming back. And really, when you think about the future, what we've seen is the critical role that transit plays in this region. Again, uh, it moved essential, tra essential uh, workers to, to the workplace. But when you think about the future, you look at the economic development, 
um, in any, it, it's hard, what I'd like to say, it's hard to find a crane in the Washington region that, that isn't within a half a mile of a rail station. And because that is what the economic development community is betting on, and that's where we that's where we will succeed. So I'm very positive about the future. During this time, we've also taken advantage of the um, reduced ridership to do a lot of construction, a lot of work. So you've seen work on the platform work, uh, but we're very excited about the future, particularly Silver Line Phase 2, which will be opening uh, very shortly, hopefully, and then also the 8000 series, because that takes us to, a next, to the next level of comfort for our customers and reliability. So I'm thrilled to have Hitachi with us. Um, I've met with both with Jason and John Paolo, who you'll meet shortly. Uh, they're fantastic. They're committed to the region. They're committed to the project. So they'll provide the details of uh, both their company and what their plans are so that you can start to think about your positioning for potential future work. Again, this is just the beginning of the effort, um, but I think this it's the uh, opportunity for some long-term relationships. So with that, let me turn it back to Suzette. Uh, to begin the program and really get to the, the meat of the matter, which is what uh, you're looking for. So thank you for joining us again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, John, for those opening remarks. And yes, I'm excited to uh, turn the presentation over to Hitachi. I want to encourage each and every one of you to take this opportunity to get engaged with Hitachi, to understand the program, to understand where you may fit in to help us deliver this very exciting program. And with that, I'd like to introduce Lane Signa. Lane is head of communication, marketing, and branding, and branding for Hitachi Rail in the Americas region. Lane. Uh, good morning, Suzette. And actually, before we get underway, I would love to introduce Jason White, who is our executive officer for the Americas region. Jason was able to pop in uh, for the beginning of our session, so I really want to take advantage for him to say a quick uh, hello and welcome to everybody. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Jason White, the Executive Officer for Hitachi Rail in the Americas. Um, thank you all for joining, and a special thanks to Wamada, uh, Paul, Suzette, and the whole team uh, for putting this on. Uh, we at Hitachi Rail are very excited and proud to be part of the, the 8000 uh, series program. And uh, we look forward to engaging in the supplier community to help support us and support the overall program for delivery excellence. And, um, and we're excited for today to have or educate you more about Itachi and understand uh, a little bit more about the program. So again, I appreciate everyone's support here. And uh, to learn more about Itachi Rail, uh, who we are and, and what we're doing, um i'll hand it back to to lane so thank you everyone okay thank you so much jason um good morning everyone thank you paul thank you suzanne thank you john um, i'm going to uh, share some slides the way we've set uh this conversation up for the supplier community this morning is in two segments so you'll have the about hitachi rail segment i'll walk you through those um slides in a few minutes and then you'll hear from John Paulo Nono, who is talking about the project specifically. So you hear about the rail cars and also about the manufacturing plant. Um, as somebody whose parent was a small business owner, I just want to say we respect greatly the small business community, the DBE suppliers. Uh, we know that every small business has um, helped our own supply chain for Hitachi Rail remain very resilient, not just in the US, but globally. So thank you. Um, I'm gonna share some slides and we will, we will keep talking, just a moment. Okay, I believe you can see my screen now. Okay. So again, thank you again for the opportunity to join you, the supplier community for WMATA for Meet the Prime. Uh, we are all excited to be here. Uh, we know that you and your own business are 
um, eager to learn the details about our program. So let's just give you a little bit of background about our company. Um, and of course, this is part of our values, diversity in the workplace and in the marketplace. So as I said, Hitachi was founded by someone who was essentially a small business owner, um, has grown to an enormous global organization. We have 300,000 employees worldwide for Hitachi. Um, and of course, our mission is to contribute to, to society through the development of superior original technology and products. Uh, we're very fortunate on our team to be part of Hitachi Rail. We are a full service provider. And so we're coming up to all of that. This is just a sense of the scope of Hitachi and all of the areas that are part of the larger um, organization. This is where we are in the Mid-Atlantic. And what we do. So fully integrated global provider of rail solutions, 12,000 employees uh, across the globe, about 1,100 in uh, the Americas region that Jason leads. Uh, you'll see that number 11 manufacturing sites globally as of today. Um, in a non-COVID year, we have 18 billion journeys on our vehicles around the world. Um, if I could have a little tech help from Anthony to play video one, please. Thank you, Anthony. I appreciate that. We were trying to make sure that uh, we, we would hear the sound a little better um, than just doing it on my screen. So I uh, appreciate, appreciate that um, support. And I hope you guys are seeing my screens again with our solution. So um, again, it's about solving complex challenges and of course, uh, mass transportation, the business that WMATA is in every day is about moving people to and from work, uh, to and from home, um, excursions, exploring. Uh, it's the lifeblood of our communities. Uh, this is how we like to describe what we do, a full service provider with end-to-end -end solutions, rolling stock, signaling, systems, turnkey, um, operation service and maintenance. And all of these areas underneath, of course, with a lot of expertise um, from Hitachi Rail employees, from engineers to software developers. Um, and just to plug for our human resources team, we are hiring. So go to hitachirail.com slash groups. Um, rolling stock, obviously these are the types of um, offerings that we have. And you'll see some things on here that are environmentally sustainable, battery, <laughs> lots of interesting things that we're, we're doing globally. And getting to know the business in the US uh, that uh, Jason and John Paulo are leading and 
um, uh, specifically in the rolling stock area with John Paulo. Uh, you can see we had some really cool milestones, big milestones. We actually think the WMATA milestone is, is um, an incredible opportunity for us. Uh, very excited about this partnership to bring the 8000 series. And I'm almost at the end of my section. So just in terms of our supplier program, we just wanted to let you know this is our first outreach with you. Um, that as we look at the 8000 series, we are also updating some materials on our corporate website. But in the meantime, um, again, these slides will be made available to you. But we just had an overview. What does our contract cover? Where will the vehicles be assembled? Um, and I believe that um, Paul and Jason both also spoke to this, that it'll be in the national capital region around Washington, DC. Um, as far as our new plant is concerned, um, 400 skilled trade workers when fully staffed, plus we'll have administrative functions um, and our internal workforce of about 460, I'm just saying about 460, that's not the indirect jobs. And um, for obvious reasons, we we're just talking specifically about the Hitachi rail piece. And for suppliers, this slide I think could be very important for you. We value our suppliers. We, um, as a large company, we have a very thorough process to onboard suppliers to determine um, um, how best to, to work with the supplier community. We have procurement professionals that Again, in a supplier risk management program where there's an application process, things are, are quite thorough. Um, on our website right now is something called the uh, Supplier Code of Conduct. Pretty thorough document uh, to be able to help you get a, a sense of you know, what Hitachi looks at in terms of suppliers. Um, after June 21st, we'll have a dedicated email address um, by which you can um, include maybe a one-page overview of your services linked to your website, mention that you were part of this program. Um, again, you don't have to overdo it. It's We're just, again, this is our initial outreach. We just want to make sure that we know that you know that um, there will be a dedicated email address um, for, for this program to be able to facilitate. And with that, I will um, leave it to John Paulo to speak about the next section. Uh, thank you, Lane. <clears throat> can you can you please share in the in the second portion of the presentation? First of all, let me <clears throat> introduce uh, uh, the Rolling Stock team, uh, led by Je led by Jason. Uh, uh, my name is John Paulo Nonna. I'm an executive officer of Itachi Rail STS USA. Uh, I'm heading the operation uh, for uh, the Rolling Stock uh, in the Americas. And uh, with me here, there is also our Vice President of Manufacturing and Procurement, uh, Mr. Paolo Carosio. We will both be available at the end of this session for, uh, uh, for a question and answer. Uh, and, uh, uh, and we will try to provide as many detail as possible as our operation in order to, uh, 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 to facilitate your business. I want to take this opportunity also to uh, thank Vumata for this opportunity. For us, uh, the, uh, the local uh, uh, small business is very important because it uh, is uh, uh, something that we leverage a lot in our operation. And uh, our aim today is to um, set up the correct level of expectation with respect to this program and uh, to uh, provide information as far as the timeline of development of the program, uh, which will be, which will have a significant impact on the region and uh, uh, on our operation as well, because uh, this WMATA program is uh, the, the 8,000 series program is a strategic program pro for Itachi um, and uh, will uh, uh, will be our cornerstone in the development of our growth in the Americas. So if we go to the next slide, 
uh, we have a, a two separate sessions, a small recap of the scope of work of the program, and then we will show you uh, the, our plan for the final assembly facility that we are planning to put in, 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 the, uh, in the DC area uh, uh, in the short term. So as far as the next one, uh, please, Lynn. Um, so uh, a little bit uh, of uh, scope of work. The base contract uh, is uh, composed by the supply of uh, 256 cars uh, with options which are foreseen up to a total number of 800 cars. So it's a huge program, long-term lasting program and uh, uh, will represent our basis uh, for the operation in the United States in the near future. Next, thanks. Lynn. So um, uh, as, par as part of the uh, as part of the scope of work, uh, um, uh, we uh, also are planning to, as we said, open a facility in the DC area. Uh, anticipating maybe some questions, the final location is not uh, set up yet. It will be known at the beginning of next year. There is a process we need to go through. There are activities that we need to go through. So we don't have a final location for the facility yet. What is important to know from your standpoint, however, is that uh, we uh, this facility will be a, a manufacturing facility for train uh, where we will develop car assembly. Uh, we will have uh, static and dynamic testing. We will perform boogie assembly and other electronic uh, uh, operation. Uh, next. So what is our plan for the uh, final assembly facility? It's clearly a facility, if you go to the next lane, uh, it's clearly a facility that uh, we will be uh, uh, from scratch. Uh, um, basically, like we did uh, in our current uh, uh, facility that we have in Miami uh, right now. It's uh, something that uh, we have done in the past uh, and uh, we are pretty expert in and uh, that we'll do in the future. And we have this small video that is embedded in the presentation to uh, to show you what happened here in Miami that we hope to uh, replicate uh, in the short term in uh, in uh, the DC area as well. So uh, this is uh, the uh, um, theoretical layout of the facility. Of course, the final design will be uh, will be um, uh, customized to the specific location that we will find. In any case, uh, we are envisaging uh, uh, an overall uh, uh, an overall product an overall production capacity of uh, 20 cars per month, which means uh, in the uh, in uh, uh, in the short terms, uh, basically almost uh, uh, 700 thousand man hour a year of production, and uh, we will have five production lines and. Uh, uh, and uh, three tracks uh, 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 with a capacity of two quad units uh, and three single cars uh, uh, inside the facility for the functional testing. Uh, the facility will be also equipped with, uh, with uh, an external test track to provide uh, dynamic testing, which is required by the WMATA contract before the delivery of the vehicle to uh, the Green Belt Yard for the acceptance and uh, uh, injection into revenue service. Uh, next line, please. Uh, now, 
here uh, there is a, a breakdown of uh, the different area. If we don't move uh, into the presentation mode lane, I think we are not able to see that. Uh, so, uh, as we were saying, uh, the facility will be customized to our needing. There are, there are going to be uh, a, a lot of specialized area, like the offline assembly area that you see in this uh, in this picture, that uh, where we are going to pre-assemble uh, electrical harnesses and uh, uh, and uh, uh, electrical components before the installation on the vehicle. Uh, next, uh, <clears throat> and uh, there will be a main assembly area uh, where we will uh, uh, install equipment on the cars uh, in low stands and high stands. And uh, if we go on, there will be uh, a, an area of the plant which will be dedicated to warehouse, of course and uh, another one uh, which are going to be uh, technical and specialized area for truck assembly and uh, electronic uh, uh, converter assembly. Uh, the facility will be equipped internally with a, a water test uh, uh, as well as with a tracking station and uh, finally after the completion of the cars, uh, the cars will go in uh, the functional testing uh, area, which, uh, as I said, uh, is going to provide the full capability of uh, 20 cars per month of uh, delivery. Next. Uh, next uh, line, please. And, uh, in order to let you understand the timeline we have in front of us, which is very important for all of you, uh, the facility will be in operation, uh, uh, roughly speaking, in <coughs> uh, 2.5 years from now. Uh, so we are talking about 2023. Um, and uh, um, but in this um, in time we will always uh, explore the uh, local supply chain to understand uh, our possibility to improve the uh, uh, to leverage the uh, the local economy and the local business in order to support the operation of the facility. So um, we will go live with our. Um, mailbox that Elaine introduced during the first presentation um, and uh, in uh, the middle of June and uh, we invite you all uh, to uh, introduce uh, introduce yourself uh, in that mailbox. Uh, if you want to help us it would be very important uh, to put in the subject uh, of the email uh, uh, the name of the company and the scope of work of the company for us uh, to have a better understanding of uh, uh, what uh, you are proposing yourself for and uh, uh, and uh, we will be happy to receive all of your input. Thank you. Now turning to Lane for the conclusion. Thank you, John Paolo, um, and thank you again to the WMATA team. I, th I hope that you saw and learned some things about Hitachi Rail, about Hitachi, and about the 8,000 car series that, that we're really excited uh, to see coming into uh, WMATA. Um, and Suzette, I believe that your team had some closing remarks. So thank you again so much for this opportunity. Obviously, we'll be um, here for Q&A. Thank you, Lane, very much. I appreciate that. Um, we would really like to get started um, with the Q&A at this time. And so, um, Lane, she will be looking into the chat. Please make sure that all of your questions are in the chat and we will make sure um, um, that if we can't get to all of your questions today, we will um, try to get responses to them and have them um, emailed out to the attendees. So at uh, this time, um, I will have Lane 
look into the chat to see if there are any questions there. Um, and she will, you know, try to get to as many as we can. And then we will uh, close out the event. Thank you, Michelle. I'm seeing lots and lots of great introductions from uh, your small business community and people are asking to make the presentations available, which I know that we will. We have a question about will we need a photo and a documentation for this project? I'm just trying to scroll backwards in the chat. Just a second, guys. <laughs> Take your time, Lane. Here's one for John Paulo. When is the design uh, for John Paulo? Um, when is the design of the manufacturing facility scheduled to begin, John Paulo? Uh, the manufacturing, uh, the design of the manufacturing facility is uh, is going to start uh, is going to start uh, in the in the next uh, two to three months uh, once we have completed uh, uh, our uh, due diligence uh, on the several locations that we are exploring. Thank you. Um, and then there's a question also, John Paulo, um, about when will the email boxes go live? I can answer that one. We said June uh, 21st, so, and and that will be included in our in our presentation. The specific email address. Also in the chat, will you need scheduling services for this project and document control services? Um, I'm seeing a couple of these. And so um, Paulo is also joining us. Paulo, I don't know if you want to speak to that. Yes, of course, we will need that also. So for sure, if you if uh, there is somebody that can provide this kind of service, uh, need to reach out the, the address uh, after June 21st and so that we can uh, collect the information and whenever uh, we 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 start in the research of this kind of services we're going to contact uh, the company that can do that thank you paulo so for john paulo for the production of the rail cars will the production be by hitachi staff or will it be subcontracted contracted out uh, we will uh, uh, we will leverage uh, uh, all uh, kind of uh, resources. Yes, of course, uh, we will have uh, uh, Itachi staff, but uh, we are also looking to outsource activities and uh, also to employ temporary agencies. Um, so we had a question about the bogies. Will the bogies be built in the DC plant? The bogies will be assembled in the DC plant at current, uh, according to the current industrial plan. Uh, uh, bogies, uh, the bogie frame will be uh, shipped, uh, uh, manufactured from Italy, and uh, we will, uh, uh, and we will instead buy all the equipment. Uh, uh, in the uh, US and we will assemble them in, in the assembly plant. Thank you. That that seems to be another question. You know, the, will the car shells be made ahead of arriving DC, which I think you just addressed. So thank you for that. Um, we have another one asking about language services provider, translation and interpreters. Do we, do we have a need for that? So I'm again just kind of looking at um, what a great range of sub of uh, uh, suppliers you guys have in your small business community this is amazing. Um, I don't know if you if you have a need for translation services. Uh, John Paulo again just kind of reading through quickly on the chat. 
Well, we will uh, evaluate every uh, every possibility. So I encourage uh, everybody to present uh, the, themselves and their company in the uh, in the mailbox, uh, and uh, uh, certainly we will leverage a lot of the inquiry we will receive. Some questions about um, training the workforce, the 460 people in the workforce, or um, another way to interpret that is, do we need support in um, in hiring that workforce, John Paulo? Uh, of course, we will. Uh, we will activate uh, uh, local processes uh, in the area uh, in order to be able to grow the workforce locally uh, 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 at the rate that uh, we're going to be needing, which means uh, uh, in a time frame of probably uh, 12 to 15 months we will need to reach uh, uh, 400 uh, uh, workers in the plant. So so a big surge in staff then. Um, how about, will, this is actually for our WMATA, for our small business team. Will an attendee list be made available for, uh, for the folks working on other WMATA projects who are interested in contracting with WMATA? Yes, we can. Uh, we can make our attendees list available. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. Uh, this is another one, and I believe this would be potentially Paulo, but it's about uh, DBE compliance. Um, and will we be monitoring that internally? I think Jean Paolo can reply to that. That is a as a touch, we have a, a DB program uh, which is uh, active uh, and uh, that we report to the FTA. So of course, uh, yes, we are searching for DB involvement uh, uh, in the program as well. Um, I'm also seeing some uh, folks who are electrical engineers. They've asked, who do we reach out to for joining the design teams? Um, again, you know, we will have that mailbox activated in a few weeks, but John Paulo on the design teams and the electrical engineer piece, if you want to speak to that. Yeah, we, uh, we uh, will definitely need electrical engineering resources, uh, both for managing the manufacturing processes uh, and the design. So yes, there will be space this kind of uh, activities in our plan. Um, some interest from software development and IT. For John Same Paul. answer as before. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. This is good. Um, okay, let's see. Will there be community outreach for employee recruitment and awareness? Um, I believe the answer is yes. I can tell you the answer is yes. Um, John Paulo, are there HR consulting opportunities for this project? Uh, definitely, our HR department will establish uh, uh, will establish a, a, a platform uh, of uh, services that uh, will access locally. So, I guess the answer is no, is yes, but uh, we. Uh, uh, we need to wait uh, for when the, when the uh, plant will be operating in order to have these kind of services set up. Um, any plans for, uh, will we be requiring fuel for the project? There's such a wide variety of questions in the chat. I'm trying to give things that... <clears throat> Well, uh, we build uh, uh, electric vehicles, so fuel is not uh, uh, is not one of our uh, uh, core uh, element, and uh, I don't think we will require fuel other than, of course, for uh, the logistic management. For lift, maybe for lift, for gas, maybe little quantity, not fuel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there were a couple of those in here. Again, there's a lot of uh, a lot of the attendees are just introducing themselves, which is so great uh, to see. Uh, 
do we have all of the suppliers chosen for the development and manufacturing of the rail cars? Uh, not yet. Uh, there are core uh, there are core business suppliers that are currently running under bid, but uh, 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 more and they need to be qualified in our system. And uh, but um, many suppliers will be chosen at the later stage of the design phase. I would say around the end of 2022. Great. Um, will any of the assembly happen in Miami? It seems like people are paying attention. They know where else we have our manufacturing. Will any of the assembly happen in Miami or, or will everything happen between Italy and Washington? And not at this stage. Uh, uh, we, um, we will have uh, uh, some uh, specialized component uh, coming from Italy according to the current industrial plan. Uh, but uh, uh, the majority of the activity will be done in the uh, DC area plant. Okay, and um, there was a question about the RFP for the design of the facility and um, uh, releasing that, it, do we have, once the location is finalized, the question is, Please confirm the RFP for the design of the facility will be released in a few months once your location is finalized. Yeah, it will be. Uh, it will be probably released by uh, the developer that uh, we will choose, and uh, probably it's not going to be handled directly by ourselves, but uh, it's going to be uh, outsourced by the developer that we will choose. Okay. Um, will there be management or economic consulting services available for small businesses? Certainly, yes. Okay. Um, will the rail cars use small cell batteries in them, such as industrial alkaline or lithium cells? No. Okay. Um, again, there's so many great questions. I feel like we've gotten through most of them. Uh, again, lots of good introductions. Oh, um, do we have the suppliers chosen for the lighting in the facility? Not yet. <laughs> One day. <laughs> yes, this is our, yeah. um, just to remind everyone, so this is our initial outreach um, with the supplier community for um, the team from the small business uh, unit. It's a, little, it's a little early. Yes. For that. It's so good to see all the excitement again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scrolling through all the chat. <laughs> uh, lots of comments about the uh, presentation. So uh, well done, uh, Jason, John Paul. Thank you very much. Let's see, um, lots of just lots of amazing introductions. Uh, we did. Add, there was a question about: Will everyone who was invited to this be invited to the next? event and I um, uh, thank you thank our hosts from um, the small business organization yeah um, let, for Michelle so. <laughs> so so let me answer that so yeah. this is just the first of, of, of a couple of Hitachi meet the primes outreaches that we will be doing um, as things move forward with the project yes we will invite everyone back. Um, for the next uh, Hatachi Meet the Primes. So this will not be the last one. We do look forward to everyone's attendance as the project moves forward and, you know, we discuss things. We'll get to more specifics as we move forward in the project when, when we have the other outreaches. Uh, will there be any opportunity for freight transportation companies? Yeah, yes. Yes, for sure. Okay. Um, will the seats be hard surfaced or cushioned? I think that uh, we would have to defer something like that, but uh, unless, John Paul, you want to speak to that now? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. Will will the uh, will the seats be uh, hard hard surfaced or cushioned? Uh, I think this is part of the, the tail design phase, so it will be established at a later uh, stage, but uh, 
let's say that the technical requirements are fairly similar to the uh, current 7K uh, specification. So uh, the expectation should be uh, fairly similar to the 7K. Yeah. Um, question about the car will be 100% assembled in Miami or Washington? No, in the, in the plan. Washington. Should... In Washington. Area. Yeah, in the Washington area, not in the Miami plant. You know. we, we, we are planning to have the, the new plant and to do the assembly in the Washington area, yes. Perfect. Um, what should a prospective small business contractor do to prepare to work with Hitachi Rail? Well, uh, uh, I would say that uh, uh, we have a qualification process in our system. So first step would be to uh, present the company in the mailbox that we introduced. And then uh, uh, when the moment will come, we will reach out to the company to go uh, to, um, to the process of qualification for our vendor system uh, uh, in case any contract is going to be awarded to them. Yeah, <clears throat> we will reach them out in that in that case, and there is a some form that need to be filled, a pre-evaluation questionnaire, a vendor master data request form, uh, with the, with the data that we need uh, to to check uh, uh, to make some check, and also we will involve uh, our quality department uh, in case we want to make any any audit or to or uh, if the documentation is enough uh, or the certification is enough uh, we don't do any any specific audit but anyway there is a process to be followed that uh, it's it's uh, it's in our procedure and there will be form that will be sent to be filled as a first step of that but this is after you know the selection of the vendor or, or the or the possibility to make a, an order that's great, Paulo. And and in the in the first set of slides, um, we also shared there's a supplier code of conduct, and it's on the website now. Yeah, and also yeah, there is a supplier code of conduct, and and, and need to be the, the any, any vendor, every vendor need to make a declaration of compliance to be included in 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 Itachi vendor list. So this is also part of our. Uh, qualification process, yes, for sure. The code of the code of conduct uh, need to be uh, need to be um, uh, they, they need to be a declaration of compliance to that by the vendor. Um, and, and here's a, uh, Lane. Just one second. I just want to add on. This is Michelle. I also want the um the the vendors to know that we are pushing and supporting those vendors that are certified with WMATA. So we do ask that you make sure that you um, get your certifications in and that your information, if you're already certified with WMATA, is updated as well. Yes, this is a good uh, comment. Yes, for sure. This would facilitate any evaluation. Yes. Uh, Michelle, you actually read my mind because there was a question in the chat. If we're already working for, for, for WMATA, Will we still need to require to undergo evaluation yes, from Hitachi? Yes, for sure, but but the information will be taken in consideration anyway. Uh, the the level of qualification is also depending on that kind of uh, uh, work they perform uh, of a service of material they, they 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 give to us. So depending of the level of criticality of the service of or of the material, we have some. Uh, uh, qualification uh, steps. So, uh, in terms of uh, of a certification that uh, any company need to provide to be a supplier of Itachi, for sure we believe that if they are a Vumata supplier, probably they already have this kind of certification because are pretty common in the, in our business. But anyway, we have a process, and for sure we need to follow. Um, I saw a question in the chat about cybersecurity services. Um, obviously, um, there is a Hitachi um, and Hitachi Rail have cybersecurity. Um, John Paulo, specifically for this project, will you need additional cybersecurity? 
definitely there is a, a, a specific requirement about cyber security is a very uh, a, a very uh, challenging requirement in the project uh, so um, we are uh, exploring that area during the design phase with Wumata. So yes, there is a, a, a very high attention towards cybersecurity. Um, there are also uh, some questions about what platform um, will be used for the different phases to promote them to this community. So through the mailbox, through the website, that sort of thing. Well, the mailbox will be our first, uh, uh, our first uh, uh, point of collection for information, and uh, uh, and then we will uh, contact uh, the uh, the different companies uh, according uh, to the uh, possibility to the um, capabilities that we will have and the possibility that we will have. So that uh, starting from that point, uh, we will follow our uh, our process, uh, and we will be able to include the, the specific uh, companies in our system through the process we were talking before. Um, I have one question here about the expected project delivery system for the manufacturing facility. Is it design? bid build or will it be design bid build uh, the program is essentially uh, a, a procurement program the design and build generally is a process that is applicable uh, in the civil works but uh, yes this is essentially a design and build where we touch it this fully design uh, uh, the car and uh, uh, and uh, uh, build the car. Also in the chat, just again, many many people just sharing their the type of business that they have and if they're MBE certified. There's a lot of activity in the chat. <laughs> Lots of great introductions. So we appreciate all the questions, um, and thank you guys for the variety of the questions. We're just um, oh, when will the first first Hitachi car run in Washington? This is the question we all want to know. According to the schedule of the contract. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because it's uh, the the first delivery I've foreseen, roughly speaking, uh, uh, thirty uh, three years, uh, something more from the notice to proceed. So we're talking about the end of twenty twenty three. Okay, I think we covered the audit, uh, the mailbox, RFPs. Um, how about communication, voice, data, fiber, phone systems? Any need for those? Of course, uh, yes. So in this uh, uh, new normal that we are living, communication uh, uh, are going to be of primary importance also for the plant. How about a need for a post-construction cleaning? Sorry, Lena, I didn't get that. Uh, so post-construction, will there be a need for cleaning services, janitorial services? Yes. Okay. Definitely, yes. Uh, Lane, we have yeah. enough time for um, Lane. We have enough time for just two more questions, and then we will um, close all questions after those last two, and then we'll be bringing um, Susan Moore back on to close us out. Okay. Um, there was a question on the. Okay, we did the freight transportation. Sorry. Um, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Uh, the D, your DBE general goal, uh, John Paul. Um, there is. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the um, the um, eight thousand serious contracts are required uh, for 
uh, a target for the economic development in the area uh, higher than 8%. This is uh, uh, the percentage that uh, uh, we can refer to. Uh, what kind of consulting work that, that kind of wraps up three or four different of those questions? I think that would be the last question. So, if we were looking for consulting services, what type of consulting services would we be? The voice broke up. Oh, can you hear? Can you hear me? Um, if we were looking for consulting services, what type of consulting services would you be looking? For? I'm sorry, Lane. Did you ask something? <laughs> yeah, we have a problem on him hearing you. Okay. So the last question is about consulting services. Consulting services. Yeah, would we be looking for consulting services? And then um, just we could do one more. What is considered the greater Washington area? Which would be the national capital region. So I'll just answer that one quickly. Um, but for John Paulo and Paulo consulting services, will you have a need for consulting services? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we will definitely search for consulting services. Uh, to support the operation uh, in order to uh, be able to be more specific, we need to go uh, uh, further along the program. So we encourage everyone to uh, present themselves in the mailbox so that we can uh, we can have a knowledge of what the market can propose. Hey, Michelle, I think we hit more than your last two questions. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Just thank you so much. I really want to thank the Hatachi team. At this time, we'd like to uh, bring um, Suzette Moore back on. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the Hatachi team. That was a great Q&A session. Um, just want to ask a couple questions, Miss Michelle, and not to put you on the spot, but there was a lot of information going back and forth there. So we will we be able to make sure that all the participants um, have access to it and that we would have uh, be able to let them know who all was in attendance so they can start their team building and any other alliances that might be going on. Um, yes, we will. We are going to put together um, an, an email to send out to the attendees. Um, of the presentation. We are trying to gather as much information dealing with the questions, maybe have a sheet with some of those on there and as well as an attendees list. So we will kind of put together a little packet um, for the attendees. So I hope that they look out for it. We'll also have our certification information in there as well. I saw some um, questions asking about that. So um, yes, we will be putting that together to make sure we get it sent out. And we typically have a, a survey, so we'll be following that same practice to make sure that we cover whatever we need to in our next type of event. We definitely will. That is one of our key things is to have the survey um, go out to all of our attendees. That's what helps keeps us excellent and in the front of making sure that we are giving our vendors what they need. Awesome, awesome. So. I, again, just just to wrap up, um, I hope everybody heard that there's more good information coming. So Hitachi, I want to thank all of you for for everything that you do today and apparently what you're going to do in helping us answer all these questions. So Lane, I guess look out for us. <laughs> we'll be coming to get more information from you. Uh, it was an awesome event and we thank you for uh, making sure that you were a part of this event. I also want to thank um, our general manager uh, for for his presence today and his support. And Mr. Quo, always thank you for supporting our events. Uh, to the attendees, uh, just continue to be engaged. Um, Michelle mentioned um, our, our certification. Of course, we're always growing our own database and for not this, not just this project, but any projects going further. So keep in touch with us. Make sure that you're registered. Make sure that your profiles are kept updated so you will get all of the good information that we have coming out on a daily basis. 
and just want to again thank you everyone for joining us today and making this a very successful event. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Suzette. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Everyone take care. Thank you.